Amen. We just thank God today. We just thank God today. You know, I was meditating on the word of God. The word came to me. Dealing with nobility in the house of God. Dealing with the subject called nobility in the house of God. And it's amazing because sometimes people think that you're trying to be beside yourself. When you think that we're not trying to instill in you a spirit of pride and arrogance. Okay. Amen. Let's, give, let's go to the word of God today. God bless his word in Christ's name. Let's go to Nehemiah chapter 7 and verse number 2. Dealing with nobility because there's a thing, you know, in the house of God. If you get to it before me, go ahead and read it. Nehemiah chapter 7 and verse 2. Nehemiah chapter 7 and verse 2. I'm now now. See what the word of God say. I'm going to start with verse number 1. Now it came to pass that when the wall was built, that I set up the doors and the porters and the singers and the Levite was appointed or appointed. That I gave my brother Hananiah, Hananiah and Hananiah the ruler of the palace charge over Jerusalem for he was a what? Was a faithful man. He was a what? He was a faithful man and feared God above men. He was what? He was a faithful man and had an understanding how to fear God. See, and I praise God for the ones that are here today. But I'm here today. We're dealing with the word of God today. Dealing with the importance of being wrapped up, tied up, tangled up in the word of God. Amen. Amen. So we're dealing with faithfulness today. We're dealing with nobility. Those people on the job, they have ever seen anybody on the job. They, they, you want to have someone on the job that's more intelligent, that's more skillful, but they never show up to work. They never, never, when the boss did it, made their own time, they, they, they need somebody that's faithful. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what we need in the house of God. We need faithfulness in the house of God. Amen. When I got saved in Okinawa, Japan, back in 1986, one of the first things the pastor taught me, he said, whenever the doors of God open up, if you can, you need to be in the house of God. No matter what the devil try to put on you, no matter what the devil try to send your way, you got to be faithful and come to the house of God because the day's going to come when you can't get to the house of God and you need to be in the house of God when you can make it to the house. So he told us, no people know how to be faithful. Totally important to keep in that word. See, a faithful saint don't shoot at you from church. Oh, pastor, I'm going through this. Oh, pastor, I'm going through that. Oh, praise God, you're going through this. If you're going through that, you need to be in the house of God. If the devil beat your side, your head, you need to be in the house of God. Now, I understand that some people work. But baby, everybody don't work. Now some people ain't working, they ain't feeling bad, they ain't got no headache, they ain't got no stomachache, that we only have service two days a week, praise God, two days a week. You need to press your way to the house of God. My Lord, do what they tell me, I don't know how much now. They tell me during the Zulu the street that they had church for three years straight, every single day, every single night, and we have a problem coming. Lazy. Lazy. And we want the Lord to cast the devil off us. Baby, the devil gonna keep on messing with you till you learn how to be faithful to the house of God. The devil gonna keep on picking with you till you learn how to be faithful to the house of God. Let's go to Ecclesiastes chapter number 12 and verse number 3. Ecclesiastes chapter 12 and verse 3. Amen. He taught me that. That was a man on the right hand, that was a man on the left. He taught three of us that. One of the first things he said to be faithful to the house of God. If you show up, the Lord will use you. If you show up, be at the appointed place, at the appointed time, doing God's business, God can and will use you. It's hard to use somebody that ain't got it. It's sort of difficult to use them when they ain't got it. Amen? Ecclesiastes in chapter 12, verse 13. Are we there yet? Dealing with nobility in the house of God. See, one of the first things I know as a pastor of whether or not you're a noble saint is when you show up in the house of God. I don't care how much word you claim you know. I don't care how anointed you claim you are. If I can only see you when you preach the word of God, you ain't know when you only shout when you play, when you sing a song, when you can only get happy when it's your turn, when you put on black. Oh, pray, I can't. I'm checking you out. Hallelujah. Go ahead and read it for me, somebody. Clean it, chapter 12, verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole 
bed. Your duty is to do what? Watch TV on Wednesday night. Watch TV on Sunday. I got a backache. Well, baby, if you had a job and your back was hurt, you'd slap some patch on and keep on going. But why is it that you get a back and you can't come to church? If there was called for you to come and get some money, oh Lord, ain't no backache, ain't no foot ache, ain't none of that stuff. And we, if y'all find out that Pastor Joe was handing out checks at the church, I bet you'd be here. Ain't talking about no find out. I don't have now a thousand dollar check. I bet they'll come in the hand and somebody had to carry them in here. We gotta learn nobility. Nobility, man. And I ain't can I be real? Ain't nothing wrong with jumping and shouting. We need this word. You need the word of God. You need you must have the word of God. Amen. Let's go to Psalm chapter 119. Did we read it? It says, well, please that's the chapter number 12, verse 13. We read that. Let's go to Psalm chapter 119 and verse number 10. Number 11. See what the word of God say. Dealing with nobility. I'm not, I'm not being, you need to know this book inside and out. How many of y'all have read the word of God one time last year from couple to couple? Wait a minute. Only one person, only two people in here read the Bible. Don't tell me about your study plan. Don't tell me about how deep you are in the word of God. Pastor, I've been studying that chapter on the last one. Well, then move on. Read something else. See, so tell me. Getting into that word big time. If you haven't read this book from cover to cover, I read it. I go through every year at least read it one time. And then, at least, yeah, every single year. So when somebody comes knocking on my door, telling me and questioning what I believe, man, I got the book to pass me up. I ain't got what my pastor told me. I ain't got what bitch. I thank God for pastor. I thank God for pastor, but I ain't got the word of God. The word of God is in my heart. And I can rattle it on. And once I speak the word of God to you, you can receive it or reject it. I do not. I care, but I don't care that much. When I give you the word, you got it. It's up to you to receive that. You 